Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the cardiac cycle and cardiac electrophysiology. Okay, so in the previous video what we did is we went over the uh, anatomy of the heart. Uh, we also saw what this picture that I'm going to be drawing from now on actually represents. How it represents this bizarre, um, well, reasonably sensible actually, so that it shows all uh, four chambers of the heart, but still uh, a difficult plane to uh, visualize of the heart uh, where you've chopped through it this sort of diagonal angle here so that you can see all four of the chambers of the heart uh, together. Okay, right. Uh, I just, before we move on to actually discuss the cardiac cycle, would like to put a few more things onto this picture. Uh, in particular, one of the things that I want to label up is this septum in between the two ventricles. Okay, this portion of uh, cardiac tissue that is separating the right ventricle from the left ventricle. Okay, we're going to talk about that a lot, and that's called the interventricular septum. So I'll put its name up here. So interventricular septum. Uh, so as I say, we will be talking about that a lot once we actually come on to uh, the cardiac electrophysiology. Right, so what I now want to do is actually talk about the cardiac cycle. Now, the cardiac cycle is the cycle of contraction that actually moves blood along this path that I have shown. So we've now described how blood is actually going to move through the heart and the circulatory system. Um, what I want to do is talk about the actual sequence of contraction that the heart undergoes in order to actually get blood to move in this way. Okay, right. Uh, so, um, firstly, let's just talk about the basics. So the heart is going to beat, it's going to contract, it's going to go through uh, the cardiac cycle. So when we say that the heart uh, beats, what that means is the heart goes through a cardiac cycle. So each beat of the heart, the heart is going through a cardiac cycle. Now, firstly then, what is the sort of average heart rate? What is the average number of beats that the heart makes in a minute? Well, the average heart rate that we're going to be working with is around 75 beats per minute. Okay, so the heart will usually go through 75 cardiac cycles per minute. Now that is just sort of like an average. Generally, a healthy heart rate can vary between 60 beats per minute and then 100 beats per minute. So 75 is just sort of in the middle, okay? Uh, now, if we accept this average though and work with that to come up with times, how long will it take for each of the heart uh, beats to actually occur? How long does each cardiac cycle actually occur? Well, of course, very simply, all we need to do is take 60 and divide it by 75. So what we want to do is take 60 and divide it by 75. So how are we going to work that out? Well, of course, what we can do is divide both of these things by 5. So we'll get 12 divided by 15 here. Okay, so just cancelling fractions now. Uh, we can divide it by 3 now. Uh, so we'll go to 4 over 5. And of course, 4 over 5 is very simple. That's just 0 0.8 seconds, therefore. So we've taken 60 seconds in a minute. We've divided it up into 75 because it's 75 beats in a minute. And now what we've got is how many seconds each of the heartbeats must take. Uh, and it's 0 0.8 seconds. Okay, so that's the sort of average amount of time that a heartbeat will take, and there's a fancy name for this, it's called the cycle duration, the duration of the cardiac cycle. Okay, so there's some initial basics. Another basic pieces of, well, some more basic pieces of terminology that I want to talk about are what do we mean by diastole and systole? Well, before I actually tell you what is meant by diastole and systole, let me remind you of something that I said in the previous video. Everything about the cardiac cycle is told from the perspective of the ventricles always. The ventricles are the important chambers of the heart. The atria are there, they do contract, and they do play a role in the cardiac cycle, but we could do without them. And therefore, um, the ventricles are the main chambers of the heart, and we tell everything from the perspective of the ventricles. So, diastole and systole mean relaxation and contraction 
respect of these, so I'll just write them down firstly. So this word, diastole, this means that the heart is currently in relaxation. So if you say that the heart is relaxing, or sorry, if the heart is in diastole, this is the period of the cardiac cycle where the heart is relaxing. Now it's specifically when the ventricles are relaxing. If no one specifies, you take this as the period where the ventricles are relaxing. Now on average, about 0.5 of the 0.8 seconds for each cardiac cycle is spent in diastole where the ventricles are relaxed. Okay, uh, another important word is systole. Now this is the exact opposite. Systole is where the heart is contracting, the period of the cardiac cycle where the heart is contracting. And again, by contracting we mean that it's the ventricles contracting. Okay, if people don't specify and just say systole, we mean the period where the ventricles are contracted. Okay, because everything is given in terms of the ventricles from the point of view of the ventricles. So of course, simple maths, that's going to last for 0.3 seconds because the period of diastole plus the period of systole uh, must add up to the entire cycle duration of the cardiac cycle. Okay, right. So there's some basic terminology, and we will be using these words. I'll use them in context, so I don't expect you to know how to use these yet. So what we'll now do, now to find those two terms, is we'll actually use them, and hopefully that will give you better feel for actually being able to use them. Okay, so let's now go through the cardiac cycle. So the cardiac cycle is usually split down into four separate stages. So we'll begin with stage one. And stage one is known as the inflow stage. And as I say, all of the cardiac cycle is told from the perspective of the ventricles. So where are we where is blood inflowing into? Well, of course, it's going to be inflowing into the ventricles. So stage one of the cardiac cycle is where blood is flowing into the ventricles. Okay, so uh, this is the situation we're in. One cardiac cycle has just ended. Now what needs to happen is blood needs to return into the ventricles because obviously I hope that you have the appreciation that in each cardiac cycle, even if you know nothing about the cardiac cycle, I hope you appreciate that in each cardiac cycle the ventricles are going to empty their blood into uh, their blood vessels. So the right ventricle will empty its blood into the pulmonary trunk, the left ventricle will empty its blood into the aorta. So now the first stage of the next cardiac cycle is going to have to be that the ventricles are going to refill. So in the inflow stage, what's going to happen is the ventricles are going to be relaxed. So this is part of diastole. Okay, so the first stage of the cardiac cycle is part of this larger phase which we call diastole. Okay, and blood is going to be flowing back into the ventricles. So blood will be coming uh, from the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava into the right atrium and then into the right ventricle uh, to fill the right ventricle. Okay, and that will be deoxygenated blood. And in the case of the left ventricle, blood will be coming back from the pulmonary veins into the left atrium and then through uh, the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle here. Okay, so that's the inflow stage, and well, actually there's a bit more to the inflow stage. Also in the inflow stage, we have the contraction of the atrium. This is an important bit not to forget. So the inflow stage uh, initially consists of just um, refilling whilst the atria are relaxed as well. So initially the inflow stage has both of both the atria and the ventricles relax. Now, throughout the entire inflow stage, the ventricles are going to be relaxed, but the atria aren't necessarily going to be relaxed. But initially, they are going to be relaxed. So in this initial portion, you're getting refilling with both the atria and the ventricles relaxed. So the blood is just coming from the vena cava uh, and the pulmonary veins coming through the atria and then into the ventricles. Then in the later stage of the inflow stage, what we're then going to get is atrial contraction. So we get atrial contraction, and this is going to further fill the ventricles. So the ventricles have filled up nicely, but now they're going to get a little bit more blood stuffed into them by atrial contraction. So this is the little role that the atrial contraction actually does have. It fills the ventricles up a little bit more, it pushes a little bit more blood into them. Okay, but they're already quite full. They're just now going to get a little bit more pushed into them. So both the right atrium and the left atrium will contract together in the inflow stage whilst the ventricles are still relaxed. And they will push blood 
into uh, the right ventricle and the left ventricle, respectively. Okay, so that's the end of the inflow stage. Now the right ventricle and the left ventricle have got as much blood as they will uh, ever have. Okay, and now what we're going to begin is the contraction stage. So all of the inflow stage is considered diastole, even though the atria contract at the end of the inflow stage. Remember, everything's told from the perspective of the ventricles. The atria contracting isn't the ventricles contracting. Okay, and therefore this is still considered diastole, even though the atria are contracting. Okay, now we're going to have stage 2, which is where the ventricles are going to contract. Now, initially, this contraction will be what's known as iso volumetric contraction. So stage two is called isovolumetric contraction. And this is the beginning of systole because now the ventricles are actually going to contract. So stage one was part of diastole, stage two is now going to be part of systole. So what does this mean? Isovolumetric. Well, iso means the same. Okay, it's like homo. Iso is another prefix that means the same. Volumetric means, of course, volume. So the volume is going to remain the same even though we're contracting. So what's going to happen here is the cardiomyocytes are going to contract. You're going to hugely increase the tension in the walls of the ventricles. So let's use our picture here. So the cardiomyocytes are going to all shorten, okay? Uh, you're going to hugely increase the tension in the wall, okay? The pressure in here is going to get much, much bigger. But at the moment, the pressure isn't big enough to actually force the blood into the blood vessels. Okay, in particular, in the case of the left ventricle, you've got to compete with the high pressure in the aorta. Okay, so the left ventricle is going to need to get pressure very high inside it in order for blood to actually start moving through the aortic valve and into the aorta. Now, blood will not be pushed from the ventricles back into the atria because we have the atrioventricular valves ensuring that one way flow of blood from the atria to the ventricles. So in isovolumetric contraction, the ventricular walls are contracting, but they're not actually forcing any volume out yet. The blood is all still there. All that's happening is you're just building up the pressure higher and higher inside the ventricles so that then it's going to be above the pressure in the pulmonary trunk and the aorta respectively so that blood can then be ejected. Okay, so stage two is the first stage of systole then when we have isovolumetric contraction and then of course stage three is when the pressure in the ventricles actually does get high enough for blood to start moving through the semilunar valves into either the pulmonary trunk or the aorta. Okay, and this is called ventricular ejection. Okay, so ejection of course just means um, blood m pushing out. Okay, so uh, blood being forced out. So ventricular ejection is uh, stage three, and this is another systole stage. This is another part of systole because the ventricles are still contracting. So now what's actually happening is it's not isovolumetric contraction anymore. The volume is going to get smaller. So now the cardiomyocytes are still contracting, but now they can actually get the volume smaller enough. Uh, okay, the pressure has got high enough that blood is actually going to be forced out uh, and into these major blood vessels. Okay, so then that's ventricular ejection. So of course blood therefore will be pushed from the right ventricle into the pulmonary trunk to go around the lungs. In the case of the left ventricle, they'll pushed out into the aorta to go around the entire body. Okay, now that's the end of systole. We're going to go back to diastole. Now the ventricles need to relax. And initially, you have another stage of uh, diastole before you go back to the inflow stage. And this stage of diastole is called isovolumetric relaxation. Okay, so isovolumetric relaxation. And again, isovolumetric means the same thing, same volume, okay? But this time we're relaxing. Now, what's going to happen here then? So what's going to happen is the cardiomyocytes are going to start relaxing and the tension in the wall of the ventricles is going to go down hugely. So in the wall of the right ventricle and the wall of the left ventricle, the tension is now going to go down and the pressure in the right ventricle and left ventricle is going to decrease and decrease and decrease. Okay, however, is the volume going to go up? Remember, we've ejected a large amount of our blood, and generally the ejection fraction, 
which this is an added little bonus. Uh, the ejection fraction, known as EF, just means the fraction of blood that is ejected from the ventricles. Generally, the ejection fraction is between 60 to 70 percent, the healthy ejection fraction, so it's around 60 to 70 percent. So you've ejected a huge percentage of the blood that's actually in there. You haven't ejected everything. I mean, would you really expect it to eject everything? Of course not. It would have to contract down so there was no volume left inside it. Okay, but you've ejected a lot. Now, initially, you're not going to get the volume actually increasing. You're not actually going to get blood flowing from the atria into the ventricles again because the pressure is too high in these ventricles at the moment. So what needs to happen is you firstly need to relax and let the pressure get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until the pressure is now small enough that there is a pressure differential, there's a pressure gradient favoring the movement of blood from the atria back into the ventricles. Then once the pressure has got low enough in the right ventricle and the left ventricle such that those pressure gradients are in favor of movement from the atria to the ventricles, then you'll start getting blood refilling the ventricles and then you're back in the inflow stage up here where you've got refilling uh, where both the atria and ventricles are both relaxed and then of course you'll go through atrial contraction again. Okay, so these are the four stages of the cardiac cycle then, and as I say, uh, these two in the middle here, these are the systole periods, so they last for 0 0.3 seconds, and the two around the edge, isovolumetric relaxation, and then the inflow stage, um, those are both the diastolic period, and they last for 0 0.5 seconds. Okay, so that's the overall cardiac cycle. The atria contract first, then the ventricles contract. Atria contract to push a little bit of blood into the ventricles, but do not think that it's the atrial contraction that puts all of the blood into the ventricles. Most of the blood just comes into the ventricles anyway as they're relaxing back down. Of course, when they're relaxing back down, they have to fill up with something as their volume gets bigger. I mean, it can't just fill up with air, because where's that air going to come from? The circulatory system is closed. So they have to refill with blood. So the atria really just push in a tiny little bit extra right at the end of refilling. Okay, they really are not necessary. You could have got rid of them. Uh, the only bit that's absolutely necessary is the uh, one-way valves here to stop um, blood from flowing out of the ventricles back from where it came uh, when you actually contract the ventricles. Okay, so there's the cardiac cycle then. What I now want to talk about is how is this all coordinated? Why does the heart do this? Why every 0 0.8 seconds does the heart go through this uh, cycle of the atria contracting and then the ventricles contracting shortly afterwards? Okay, and then everything relaxing back down. And by the way, what we haven't listed on here is where atrial relaxation will occur. Of course, atrial relaxation will be occurring whilst systole is actually occurring. So whilst the ventricles are contracting, the atrial will be relaxing and then refilling with blood. But as I say, everything in terms of the cardiac cycle is told in terms of the ventricles because they're the important ones. Okay, so... Um, how is this all coordinated? Why does the heart do this? Well, the answer is it's all done for electrical signals that are propagating through the heart, and then the electrical signals give the commands to the cardiomyocytes to contract, and that's then what causes these entire chambers of the heart to actually contract. Okay, so there's the gross account of the cardiac cycle. And what we will spend the rest of the video talking about is the electrical signaling that actually underlies this and coordinates all of this. Okay, so we'll have a break here, and in the next video we'll begin with the actual electrical signals that propagate through the heart to actually coordinate the cardiac cycle.